Hey, good morning everyone. It's Tractor Man 44 here. I actually got this thing running way back last fall. I don't know, September, October, November, somewhere around in there. And then it set all winter out in the lean-to. Didn't have time to finish it all up. Whenever I fire this thing up today, it's going to be the first time we fired up with the, the newly converted 12-volt uh, existing system over to the 12-volt uh, alternator. We're converting from the old Lucas uh, electrics and Lucas generator and dash pod over to you know a homemade setup so uh, that's what we're going to do but I, I had to admit that I'd forgotten one thing at the tail end of the last video and that one thing was I forgot the neutral switch that's in the transmission connected to the uh, low high range gear you have to make sure that that's in neutral before it starts and I completely wired around that completely forgot all about it until I looked yesterday and realized I got to figure out some place to put that in the wiring circuit where that maintains the integrity of that portion of the circuit. Because this is probably going to go down to my son's house, you know, and he's got a couple little boys and stuff, you know. But anyway, take a look and see. I'll show you where I'm going to put it. Zooming in here a little closer, you can see this. I got it on the side of the gas tank. But uh, in a video, a couple of videos ago or so, I drew up the diagram that I was going to use to connect this all up. And so to show you uh, where the mistake is or where I'm going to install it, I'll just uh, use my eraser right here on that black wire, on that black wire that goes from the momentary portion of the key switch down to the solenoid coil. I'm just cutting that wire, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna direct that wire down. I'm gonna just jump down here and go through the neutral switch, which is normally open, and go right back up here. So this year I'm gonna just mark neutral. I'm just gonna mark a newt switch. So now what will happen when I turn the key on, I'm still going to be able to see the static voltage so I can tell the, the status of the system before I try to start it. If I put it in the red wire coming over to the ignition switch, you can turn the key on, you wouldn't be able to see your static voltage or any of that stuff. Your dash lights aren't going to light up or anything like that until you put it in a neutral. Well, you know, that could be good, it could be bad. But I'm wiring it into the actual momentary portion of the switch that goes down to the, the solenoid to turn the starter motor over. So whenever I walk up to it, it's in gear, whatever, parked on a hill, I turn the key on, take a look, I can see the gauges light up, I can see my voltage, I can go ahead and lock the brakes and slip it in neutral and uh, go ahead and fire it up. So that's the whole concept behind that. So before we fire this up today, I'm gonna go ahead and wire that neutral switch in. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the uh, ignition switch out of the dash, hang it down, pull the black wire off of it, and bring it down to one of these two pigtails right here and then take the pigtail back up to where the black terminal attached on the key switch on the momentary portion and that's going to take care of it. So we're going to do that real quick and then we're going to go ahead and see if this thing will fire up and uh, make sure everything's going to function. And we put the key in. Oh, holy, looky here. Butler Outdoors Canada. Got a keychain from Butler Outdoors Canada. Now in the for what it's worth department, during that little bit of wiring change, I went ahead and pulled the positive post off the battery up here just to make sure there would be no, no problem or no issue. So I'm putting the battery post back on. So let's turn the key on and see what's going on here. Okay, we've got our dice pods all lit up. We've got our red LED showing, meaning that we are now exciting the uh, terminal number one on the alternator. So we're going to go ahead and get the voltmeter ready to check voltage. So I got it grounded. I'm going to put it on the battery terminal of the alternator. I got to go turn the gas on. Looks like about 12.6, 12.7 volts. This being a new to me tractor, I don't know what the starting sequences are going to be because they're all a little bit different. So right now, I'm going to put the uh, 
leave the transmission in neutral, but go ahead and put the low and high range in gear. Hopefully that's working, because I didn't get any solenoid. So now I should be able to find neutral. infrared thermometer. I'm using an infrared thermometer to check temperature at the new sensor's location and the location in the head where the original electric sen sensing unit or the electrical sending unit is located. and 158 on the radiator itself. All right, so there's six degrees difference in temperature from the location where the original electric sending unit was located and the point where I put that mechanical bulb. So I think we can, uh, we can kind of allow for that. That's going to be okay. You got to remember the warmer an engine gets to a certain point, the more efficient it's actually operating and run running. If you run it too cold, it's not good on the engine. Run it too hot, that's obviously not good on the engine. I got to figure out all the characteristics of starting it hot and cold to see if you have to choke, not choke, whatever. And of course, it's a whole learning curve to determine the different seasons, how to start it in different seasons. Some of my tractors, you don't touch a choke year round. Other ones, you got to choke it as soon as you shut it off, you got to re-choke it again, you know? So they're just crazy, you just never know. But at any rate, I'll tell you what, this, is, uh, this has been a pretty good little deal here. And I'm really happy with this alternator conversion. It was 12 volt originally, but I just gutted all that old cracked up wiring and all that stuff and ran all new wires, run it all in wire loom, and everything is uh, really pretty nice and intact, nice and tight. Everything is virtually new uh, with one short exception. And I don't have any lights wired in yet. Eh, I'll let my son decide if he wants to wire lights in or not. He's young enough to want to work after dark. I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't have that uh, desire. I gotta go ahead and bundle all this up. I checked, verified, no oil leak, no water leak. Everything's going good. Wires aren't rubbing or chafing on anything, so I'm really happy about that. And we verified that the neutral switch does in fact work. I had to jostle around and get it into neutral uh, in the right position before the switch would ener energize and allow the, the starter motor to turn over. I guess we can consider this a success. It seemed to work. Uh, oh, and you notice my LED, it went out when I went up to, to hook on my meter. I had come back and the LED was already out and it was turning 14.4 volts. Um, and we just rev it up, it went to 14.6 volts, which is absolutely perfect. And it's uh, externally excited, but internally regulated. And that's why you have to have terminal number two connected back to the battery terminal or the positive post on the battery, because terminal number two is what senses what condition your electrics are in and tells the internal regulator, essentially Cliff Notes uh, version, but it tells the internal regulator to increase or decrease the output to maintain the battery level that you need, you know, to uh, maintain optimum performance. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. Now what's going to follow this video here is gonna be the other videos I made actually determining what all is wrong. I had to put a water pump in, install that Petronic electronic ignition module because this tractor would never start for me below 39 degrees Fahrenheit. It would not start. I don't care what you do. And I'm not an ether user, so I was not going to flood it with ether in the wintertime, you know, to, to get it to start. And so I fiddled with it. I did everything just exactly the way it's supposed to be. I might have missed something, but I doubt it. 
put all new Ford Motor Company parts on it a little at a time, new spark plugs, spark plug wires, rotor, distributor cap, and set of points and condenser, all from the factory, and it had no change. It didn't start, it didn't run or start any better with all that stuff dialed in exactly the way they need to be according to the book. So I said, you know what, I'm just not gonna do it anymore. Set all the parts on the shelf, put in the electronic ignition, waited for it to get down around 30 degrees, walked out here in the middle of winter, fired this thing up just exactly like that, not a problem at all. So I'm pretty confident this is going to uh, take care of it. But then, you know, you get busy and it just sat out there, you know, for the rest of the winter until just last week or so, you know, decided, well, better get on it, you know. Anyway, hey, for sure, this is Trackman 44, and I am out of here, guys.